TestNG is a very popular testing framework with several features like load testing, grouping tests, and data-driven tests. The data for the tests can be provided in many ways, but using an external file for each test gives us the flexibility to run the same tests for various input data parameters. Typically, you would need to create a data provider class for each test, but in this video, we will see how to create a generic data provider class which can be used by all the tests at the same time allowing them to use their own test data file. In this video, we will create a Maven Java project, integrate the TestNG framework, add some simple code to test, then create tests first with hard-coded data, create a generic data provider class, and then use the data provider class we created for the various tests allowing each test to have its own data file for input parameters. I am using JDK 16 and IntelliJ for this demo on an Ubuntu Linux machine. However, the code should work on any platform. If you need help installing Java JDK on Linux, please watch my video installing Java slash OpenJDK on Linux. If you need help installing IntelliJ on Linux, please watch my video installing IntelliJ on Linux. Here. In IntelliJ, let me click on New Project, go to Maven, click Next, name the project as TestNG Data and click Finish. Now here is our project with its familiar Maven structure. Inside the pom.xml file, let's create a section for dependencies and add the dependency for testing. Click on the Maven tab, click on Refresh and it downloads the jars. Now let's go to our Java folder, right click and choose new class, name it app. Let's create a simple method called sum which returns an int. It takes in two int parameters a and b and inside returns the sum of it. Let's create another method which returns a boolean and call it is even which takes in an int and tests if it is even by taking its modulus divided by 0. If it is 0, it returns true otherwise false. Next, let's go to test slash java folder, right click and choose create new class and call it app test. Let's put the test ng's test annotation and write a test for the sum method. Inside, let's create an instance of the test class create an int variable result which is obtained by calling app.sum passing in 1 and 2 and then using assert true we compare the result to 3 and if it is not true we return an error message sum function failed. Similarly let's create another test called test is even. Inside it creates an instance of the app class create a boolean variable result which holds the return of the app is even method which takes in an int 2. And again, using assert true, we see if the result is true, otherwise we return an error message. First, run these tests. So both these tests pass. Now again, test ng has many annotations like before class, before method, etc. We will not go into those, but for instance, we can create a before class method here called init we can declare an app variable above and initialize it in the before class and then the two tests can refer to it. Alright, run these tests. So both these tests pass. Now let's use the external data files to pass in test data. First, let's right click on test slash java folder and choose new class call it base test. For the sake of time, I am going to copy and paste the code and explain it. You can get this code from the GitHub, the link is in the description. We have marked this method with the data provider annotation which indicates that this method would return an object array of test data. We give it a name dp. This method takes in an input parameter file name of type method which is the name of the test method calling this data provider using Java reflection. 
Inside, we first create a string path variable which points to the root of the project using system.get property user.dir and then appends test data folder. You can choose to have any path for your test data files, but I just want to keep them in a separate folder called test data. This folder does not exist yet, so let's create that by right clicking on the root and choosing new directory, calling it test data. Next, the class declares an array list. The class expects a file with the same name as the method. So, if our test method is test sum, it expects a file with the same name in the test data folder. It will create a stream from it. It will filter out the lines which start with the hash sign. This can be used for commenting. And then it collects the data in the array list. Next, it fills the array list in an object array and returns it. It allows the flexibility of having variable number of input parameters for a test class, which we shall soon illustrate. Now, let's go to our app test class and make it inherit from the base test class so that all test methods have access to this data provider. Now, for both the tests, include the data provider attribute and point it to the data provider method we just created, dp. Next, for the test data, we need to create data files with the same names as the test method. So let's right click and choose new file, give it a name testsum.txt. Using the hash sign, which our data provider class will ignore, we describe the values. Now the test sum class will have three values, space separated. The first two are the two integers we want to add and the third is the result. Let's add two test data parameter sets. Since we are reading from the files, all the parameters will be passed in as string and we can then convert them to the appropriate data types. So we pass in a, b and result. We replace one with integer dot value of a. Similarly, we replace two with integer converted parameter b. And in the assert statement, we replace three with the result passed in from the data file. Similarly, for the second test, Let's create a file with the same name test even.txt. Let's add 2 and 4. So this illustrates that the number of values for the test data may differ from file to file, but our data provider class can handle it. Now let's go to our app test class and run the tests again. And the tests fail for is even as we have pointed it to the test is even.txt file, but we have not provided any input parameter to the test method to accept the test values. Now inside the test, let's pass the value as string a, use that in the app.isEven method. Since we are using assert true, it will expect the result to be true to pass. Now let's run the methods again. And this time they all pass. We see that it ran the test for each of the test values in the test data file. So in this video we saw how we can create a generic data provider class to provide input test data to various test classes using test files with varying number of input parameters. Thanks for watching.